Hello. Welcome to part 4 of this series on nuclear medicine bone centrigraphy. Today we're going to talk about some benign bone lesions which can cause diagnostic confusion with um, malignant pathology uh, which we might be looking for at bone centrigraphy. So let's have a look at this uh, examination here. This is perhaps a rather a subtle one to begin with. Um, just to point out that uh, sometimes you can see a small area of activity here within the soft tissues like this. This is usually the injection site where the tracer was injected. Um, it might be down in the wrist, but the site is uh, often documented in the notes by the technologists. Now, there's a faint area of activity here. Um, it's rather subtle, but it was of uh, some concern. And I think also the patient had had some pain in the right arm, which was why attention was paid to the area. Fortunately we did already have an x-ray of the arm and you can see here that there's um, some sort of benign probably cartilaginous matrix in there. This is probably an underlying enchondroma in this area. Um, but in any case it's the appearances of benign bone lesion. A bone infarct can also give a similar um, appearance uh, on the syntogram. Let's have a look at another one which is rather similar. This one perhaps is a bit more concerning because there's two of them. You can see some facet degenerative change here, a bit of um, lumbosacral degenerative change um, there, and there's this area of rather linear, quite a large area of increased activity here in the right proximal humerus and in the left distal femur. And uh, we did take uh, radiographs of these areas Again, I'm not sure if this is a bone infarction or some sort of cartilaginous matrix, but it's certainly of an, of an enchondroma, but it's a benign bone lesion and we don't need to worry about that. Of course, in theory, any enchondroma could be a chondrosarcoma. It's impossible to tell on imaging alone, especially if it's a painful site. Um, but uh, generally speaking, if these are usually um, just benign. They do have to be slightly correlated with the patient's symptoms. And of course any um, uh, periosteal reaction or cortical breach would would uh, be interpreted completely differently. Here's, an, here's a, another uh, x-ray. This is showing the proximal right humeral lesion. So enchondromas, bone infarction, they can cause increased uptake. They generally have a uh, central medullary um, abnormality on the plane radiograph. Now I've lightened up this, um, this bone scan quite a bit because there's a couple of points I wanted to show you. So we've got two things we, we need to look at here. We've got some focal areas of increased activity within this bone scan and um, it's a rather unusual distribution for metastases. It's all down one particular limb here. It's a what we might call monomelic. That's rather unusual. And also you can you can see on this uh, even on the syntogram, you can see there's some kind of modeling deformity of the femur. So it doesn't have the classic angle of the femoral neck and diaphysis. Instead it's got a shepherd's crook deformity like this. Let's have a look at the, um, oh yes, and there's also a small bit of activity here in the right pubic bone. Perhaps you can see it compared with the left. Let's have a look at a plain x-ray. So you can see this underlying uh, ground glass disorganized bone textural abnormality within the right proximal femur and also, very importantly, modeling deformity. So that is a change in the underlying shape of the bone, a long-standing slow change. This is a congenital condition or one that's evolved very slowly over a prolonged period of time. Metastases don't wait for that sort of thing, they just destroy bone as they go along. But it, benign, slow or congenital processes will cause modelling deformity. Slow change in the shape of a bone, just like water over many years will erode a rock. So this is the classic appearances of fibrous dysplasia, which is a benign bone condition. This is predominantly affecting the um, lower limb here, but there is some bone textural abnormality here, as you can see. 
in the pubic bone and also in the iliac wing. So these are classic appearances of fibrous dysplasia and the plain x-ray shows further bone textual abnormalities in the femur and the tibia. You can see an odd modelling deformity appearance to this proximal tibia. Now I'm just going to show you this patient who is a lady with breast cancer and widespread metastatic disease just to let you know that occasionally you can get metastatic disease going down a limb as this lady did but she doesn't have modelling deformity in this case. She has widespread more typical metastatic disease elsewhere in the body. Here's our injection site most likely. And if we look at her plain x-ray we see dense bone sclerosis. This is the sort of pattern we'd expect in metastatic disease. A couple more examples of fibrous dysplasia because it's an important one. Here's a patient with a focal area of activity just around their orbit. There's a couple of things this can be. Occasionally if, um, if a patient is passing urine they can have a little bit of contamination from their underwear onto their fingers and then they can um, touch their face and leave a very small amount of radioactive uh, urine there. So sometimes cleaning the patients, um, for, you know, cleaning the area where the uh, spot is and repeating a spot view uh, can help to eliminate it. But in this case, um, I think we might have done that, uh, or perhaps we, for some anyway, we we thought we certainly thought it was a genuine abnormality, and we proceeded to do a CT scan because in these days we didn't have a SPECT CT machine and it's not really an area you can get much information on with just x-rays. So this showed the classic ground glass appearance, very marked thinning of the cortex but not destroyed. This is an area of fibrous dysplasia in the temporal bone. Here's another patient, he was having prostate cancer staging and there's this area of uptake here. I wonder if that was um, a mucosal of the frontal sinus because you can get reactive uptake um, of in bone around a sinus if there's inflammation in it. I thought that was a possibility and I, I didn't think it was going to be metastatic because of its smooth shape. But again, we had no SPECT spec CT then, but we, we did do a CT scan. And that showed the classic appearance of fibrous dysplasia, which is fibrovascular tissue forming within areas of bone and in this case it's taken over the frontal sinus. Notice that the cortex the cortex is of normal thickness here. If we just go back to that picture of the lady with the uh, extensive uh, femoral fibrous dysplasia you'll see the cortex is of normal thickness or maybe even thin. You can see it's, it's quite thin here actually compared with the other side. That's in contrast to Paget's disease, which we'll see in a few minutes, where the cortex is very thick. Now they're both benign conditions, but you might like to distinguish them. Okay, so speaking of Paget's disease, um, this is a patient with that condition. It's very important to recognize it because it's common, and um, it takes up. It shows very significant. Uh, radio uh, radio tracer uptake which can cause confusion with metastases and you're going to see it in patients who have got underlying malignancy. Just as a tip, Paget's disease is very rare over the age of 40. So Paget's disease will always begin as an epiphysis or an apophysis and it quite commonly takes over the whole of a bone like this. It, it, can, it, it will work its way round a bone Metastases quite often will just be round areas which destroy bone, pass through it, rather than conforming to the shape. Um, that's not always the case, but um, quite frequently. Here's our x-ray. Now the signs we're looking for in the x-ray are cortical thickening, thickening of the trabeculae, enlargement of the bone. They're the, the features we're looking for. You don't unfortunately always see them all the time. There's sclerosis of the bone here with thickening of trabeculae. That's certainly very suggestive of Paget's disease. Although I'm not seeing very um, impressive cortical thickening here. Anyway, this is um, pretty. This is quite a typical appearance in conjunction with the um, scintigraphic findings for Paget's disease. Now, unfortunately, people always just show you easy cases, but here's a patient with metastases. <coughs> 
who's rather difficult because this does look a little like Paget's disease. Fortunately, there are multiple focal areas of metastatic disease um, elsewhere, which allow us uh, to make the diagnosis of metastases. But uh, I can see how it might be difficult uh, in this particular case. Um, and you might be confused into thinking this was pagetic if it was the only site of uptake. So you have to be careful, unfortunately. Let's have a look at this patient's um, pelvic radiograph. It's not quite the same appearance. We don't have thickened trabeculae um, here. We've just got a irregular diffuse increase in the density of the bone, rather different from the classic pagetic appearance. So when Paget's disease affects the vertebrae, it tends to, I, I suppose it must begin somewhere, but when you see it, it usually tends to affect the whole vertebra. This patient had a rather prominent posterior neural arch, possibly something anterior. I didn't think that was just thyroid. So we did a SPECT CT, which shows diffuse uptake, which is the classic appearance for Paget's disease. Again, this would be quite unusual for metastatic disease. Now, Paget's disease can also cause, can also be multifocal. It's often just at one site in the body, but if it's multifocal like this, it can cause diagnostic difficulty because you may omit Paget's from your differential diagnosis. This integram here demonstrates one of the common features of Paget's disease, that is global expansion of the bone. So these bones are actually very large. This is an enormous femur here. These humor are quite big. This would be quite unusual for metastatic disease to show diffuse involvement of a bone. And overall, the distribution is um, quite different from what you'd normally expect. Now, this is possibly, you might call this a super scan because there's relatively little renal activity and um, you, you might want to call it that. But of course, it's not showing the classical proximal uptake. So, um, it's not a super scan in the true sense of the word, but um, it does. It is showing reduced renal activity due to the extensive pachetic disease throughout the body. So in this patient, we'll have a look at a couple of plain X-rays. Here's the skull demonstrating widening of the diploic space, classic of Paget's disease. And here we are in the femur. This patient has extensive cortical thickening, diffuse thickening of the cortex, thickening of the trabeculae and they've sustained pathological fracture um, due to chronic bowing of the femur, which we've made an attempt to fix, but we can see some metalwork fracture. So these are all classic appearances of Paget's disease. Here we are on the other side, cortical thickening, thickening of the trabeculae, and there, this is a, an insufficiency fracture, which we've fixed with an intramedullary nail. A couple more examples of Paget's disease. Here's a patient with diffuse vertebral involvement, this vertebra by Paget's. Extensive Paget's of the uh, left hemipelvis here, the right femur. As you can see, Paget's disease begins at an epiphysis or an apophysis, and often it'll have a, what's called a flame-shaped end. So it'll have an end with a triangular shape like this, a bit like a flame. There's increased activity here in the foot, and you can see thickened trabeculae in the uh, calcaneal x-ray we've obtained. So these are all examples of Paget's disease. Here we are with a CT scan. I can't remember if that's the patient we've just seen, but thickening of the trabeculae, sorry, thickening of the cortex and thickened trabeculae. So this is something you really need to know quite well, Paget's disease, because you'll be seeing it frequently. Another example here, Here's Paget's disease of a vertebra, increased activity. Here, that was the anterior view. This is anterior. This is posterior, showing you the posterior elements and spinous process. Here's a plain X-ray showing thickening of the trabeculae compared with the normal vertebra above. You can see it here. And the reason I'm showing you this X-ray is I just want to show you that you can um, if, if all else fails, you can always um, perform an MRI scan to tell the difference between metastatic disease and Paget's disease. With Paget's disease, you'll have small little areas of low signal from the increased trabeculae, 
bony expansion. You can see it causing spinal stenosis here. Let's look at the lateral view. We've got a big vertebral body here. This normal inferior articular process compared with the trabecular thickening in the oversize pagetic inferior articular process. This is a pagetic vertebra. But you can see it still retains a relatively um, high signal, relatively fatty signal on the T1 weighted MRI, which normal vertebrae do. Let's contrast it with the MRI scan from a patient I showed you in the last or two talks ago, where we had a metastatic deposit in the left inferior pubic ramus. This is the classic low signal appearance we see in sclerotic metastases. So this is a metastasis, low signal on T1. This is Paget's disease, where we get predominantly, predominantly normal fatty marrow, but some uh, irregular thickened trabeculae. So it's usually quite straightforward to tell the difference if you can tell the difference at your bone centrogram and plain film. It's your um, get out uh, or, or uh, your ace in the hole to tell those two conditions apart. Um, just one more thing to mention here. Um, this is a patient who had um, hyperfractionated radiotherapy for carcinoma of the lung. Radiotherapy causes devitalization of bone and uh, so there won't be any tracer uptake afterwards. And this here is a um, photopenic defect in bone caused by a radiotherapy portal, uh, devitalized bone. It's not a lytic metastasis. And you can see like radiotherapy all over the body, it has a sharp outline to it. So that's the effect of radiotherapy in bone. And you can see that in other places as well. Don't get confused by it. Okay, so we'll call it a day there, and in the next talk we'll speak about soft tissue disease. Thank you.